Welcome to Family Finance, where our finances, budgets and investment are an open book. We are a middle income family with two young boys from Brisbane, Australia, and this is our journey to get rich slow. This video explains our updated budget and what has changed. In this video, I run through our updated incomes, some expenses that I've needed to update, and our budget allocations for our expenses, savings and spending. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps to support my channel. The information in this video is for entertainment and general information only. You should always do your own research. You can read my full disclaimer in the description box below. So to begin, we had to adjust our incomes because my income has been reduced slightly because this financial year there are going to be 27 pay fortnights and my employer had to take out a little bit more tax. We are paying my husband slightly less, but we are hoping to try and sustain that amount rather than paying him more some weeks and less some other weeks. Now this is the big one. Childcare and kindy fees have resumed, so we're now paying $250 a week. This is for a total of three days each for my boys in childcare and kindy. We are thinking that our four-year-old will repeat kindy next year, so we will still have another year of double fees, but I see that as an important investment in his education. Swimming lessons resume. This is only for our four-year-old. We'll probably start our 18-month-old after summer. We have a pool at home and we want to get him a little bit more confident in our pool at home first. Our private health insurance has gone up because it now includes baby cover. I had one good night's sleep and I thought it would be a good idea to have another baby. But don't worry, that didn't last long. But I thought I'd leave it there for a few more months just to decide. Plus we've changed Foxtel to KO which is saving us a fair bit each month. KO has everything Foxtel has and we're really happy with it so far. Remember everyone's situation is different and in our budget we don't need to include car expenses, phone or internet because these are paid within my husband's business. So I do recognize that this helps us out a lot. Now this shows our budget spreadsheet. It shows our income, our allocated percentages, and then our expenses broken down into weekly, monthly, and quarterly. I'll chat about each of these sections separately. This is a snapshot of our budget. I round down our income to $1,750. I then round up our expenses to $1,100. The spreadsheet then works out the percentages for me. A big change is that I've changed our growth amount to $500 a week. We are on track to save $30,000 for growth this year, so I want to see if we can try and sustain that. These are our weekly expenses. I added back our childcare and kindy fees. I probably should try and combine all of our expenses into one section, so it's a little bit less confusing for you guys. But these amounts can just be imported without changing anything, so that's why they're in a different section. Unlike monthly expenses where I have to multiply the amount by 12 and then divide it by 52 to get these amounts. So this part of the spreadsheet does that for me. So I've now changed the cost of private health and KO and I've added back in swimming lessons. And then there is our quarterly or annual expenses which also include our power, rates and water bills. And because these bills fluctuate, I use this part of the spreadsheet to calculate their average cost. So our total expenses are $1,098, which I've rounded up to $1,100. And so in terms of the barefoot investors percentages, our expenses are 63%, which is close to his target of 60%. Our growth is 28.5%, which is higher than his recommendation of 20%, but I think it needs to be. His recommendation is more so if you want a comfortable retirement at 65, but we want to retire much earlier than that. And that's why our spending is only 8.5%, and that also includes our holidays. What we don't spend each week, we let accumulate for holidays, we have a $3,000 holiday to pay for at Christmas time. I said earlier that the reason why I wanted to save $500 a week was that we're trying to save $30,000 for the year. I really want to try and challenge ourselves to do this as this will be the most we've ever saved in a year. At the moment, we are past our target, but I've explained in past videos that this is because we've had free childcare, which has really helped us out a lot. I'm hoping our tax refunds will give this amount a bit of a boost and maybe make this goal a reality. We are getting closer to having our emergency fund fully funded, which is 12 months worth of our bare bones expenses. I've reduced the target recently because although my husband's job is not stable, mine is. And we're currently on target to save that by the end of the year. But I am tempted to fully fund it now so that all future dollars can go towards investing. So I'm not choosing each month if I should invest or put it towards the emergency fund. Some of you might be wondering how we only spend $150 a week 
if that includes holidays too. And there's a few reasons for this. Every now and then I work a casual day, which is $270 after tax. So that gives our spending or holiday savings a bit of a boost. We also buy a lot on credit card points. We have two credit cards, a personal one and a business one, and collect quite a few points, particularly on the business one. I also sell items around the house. Sometimes if there is something that I want to buy out of our budget, I won't allow myself to buy it until I've made that money through selling items from around the house. And most importantly, delayed gratification. Sometimes I wait months and sometimes years until I buy something that I really want. If you want to see our budget broken down a little further, you can check out one of my earlier videos on how we track our expenses. Or if there's anything else that you'd like to see me make a video on, please let me know. A wise woman once said to me, it's not what you earn that matters, it's what you do with it that counts. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I make videos every Tuesday about how to save money, invest, budget, and how to stay on track with your financial goals. See you next week.